Top 5 today, we're going for it, Slick Rick. Going for this. Going for this! Um, this was that bomb block that didn't play weapon on 5 and didn't have Thompson. Guys, last season you had Bunny with Priest at the end. Yeah, that was so funny. Very funny. Ay ay ay, no one drop. Ay ay ay. I don't think he often starts Wicked Shipment on one, right? See, now he trades it. So I figured it out, guys. I figured it out, at least from this player. I figured it out. So whenever he has the draw, he plays this on one. And otherwise he trades it. Haha, -ha. I found out the secret. The secret is not a secret anymore. He can null it, I guess. Do we horn these two? Nah. I mean, null is two mana, so he can have something anyway. I mean, he wants to coin weapons, so a null trade is pretty good. I don't think we care, right? He still wants to coin weapon if he has it. Who here can spell Anybody? Blood trap for next turn after he kills the four four. Okay, let me think about this turn. So I can horn. Hit a 1-1 one, one here. Then Blood Trap is active. And then we can already go in as well. We're definitely doing that because it defends the 4-4, which is kind of a big deal. And then we can do it now already. So of course I play big into removals, but I guess if he doesn't go weapon here, I'm also happy, right? I mean, if he goes sheep AOE, Grimmar is not completely doing it. It requires a lot. I mean, whatever I always feel about this matchup is, guys, you just cannot play around too much anyway you need to play your power plays and then at some point you just hope they don't have to weigh oh my cam went weird because now you pressure that coin weapon turn and if they don't coin weapon they're not always happy also i really played well around coin weapon by killing one of the one ones right because now it's really annoying i can easily make a pretty decent board next turn again guys I have the location up, so the Nagaling becomes a 4-5. I have a 6-6 six, six teacher. Like, my board is next turn also not going to be cute. Ooh, no AoE. No sheep. And no... And no Grimoire there for him. That's also a really big wreath on his hand. He would always sheep that, right? Or Grimoire that. Wow. And no coin weapon. Or he just doesn't want a coin weapon, maybe. Wow. Ty's Blood Trap is a sick discover for this deck. I feel so right. Okay, we're gonna rush that down. Okay, might be bait, but might pretty be real actually. So I think we teach your Bone Breaker here. Bone Breaker is good. So we're gonna play around Coin Thompson as much as we can here, by the way. Do we ever do this, this hero power? Hero power hit three face. Then we transform it. We hit there, we bone breaker this, then we do this. Maybe we should wait teacher, guys. Teacher's not that good here. Bone breaker's too good here to play around. I mean, I have too much reads, right? I have really a lot of reads. I know he doesn't have sheep. I know he doesn't have grimoire. So he needs to, I mean, of course he can top deck it, but my play is not bad here anyway.
Coin Thompson is pretty bad here. That's what I wanted to make sure. He was so setting up Coin Thompson, right? I'm just disrespecting the Grimoire and the Sheep because he didn't have it. Still Coin Thompson, wow. Wow, do you see how much... So here, for example, I just want to say, guys, like, I think there's still a lot of decisions with this deck. I'm really having a, a very good read on what he's doing. Four, eight, eleven, eleven plus three, fourteen, sixteen damage. Ty's leaving the imp alive. Lost you a six four instead of a three four. Yeah, but I did three more damage, right? So it it, it evens up. Could be actually frost strike hero power, but actually six six matters. Calling less or summoning. Summoning is actually really good. But it plays off curve. Maybe just damage at this point. I have but little time. Three raw damage, I guess so. We have to trade this though. Nine. He pretty likely. Oh my god, he got both of them. That's annoying. I I'm kind of gambling on him not killing the 6 6 that easy here. I actually expect these three to already be dead. What did I otherwise want to pick? What did I wanna? What could I pick instead, guys? That I was also considering. Zombies. It's not very good here, right? Zombies. Three one one ones. He actually doesn't have it yet. He's probably gonna drain so this. Go to sixteen. Phasing a three one. going grimoire okay oh that holding blast oh 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 wait together they're even better six eight wait he's so dead he couldn't kill this ah we played it well though we played around what we could play around right and after we had the read that he didn't have the sheep there, our options increased. We just had to respect Thompson. It's kind of a big deal because when you don't have to play around sheep, you can leave four HP minions up because Thompson deals three. So my four HP minions became insane. That blood trap actually was a good play. I think the way you play your uh, zero mana horn now is just as much tempo as you can in most matchups. I mean, I went Omega aggressive with Horn, Hero Power, Horn, Blood Trap, right? But don't be surprised, guys, if that guy literally had weapon in the opening or in the hand there. The Lich King. Shaman! For Doom Hammer. Oh, will serve. Let's keep Eggy Boy. Eggy Boy not that good against Shaman, always. Because they play Primordial Wave. So without location, he's sometimes a little sad egg and he becomes a tiny fin. But yeah, of course we keep it. We also can get Arm Dealer, Sidekick. Also, Primordial Wave is still 3 mana, right? So it, it, it uses the 3 mana turn. So Null Evolve can happen at turn 4 if he just passes turn 2 and 3. I feel you should kill totems in the early game. But I can't really argue that much about going face. But I think you should do this because they play another totem. It gets one attack. It gets annoying. You give them more uh, evolve options. It's just giving them annoying plays. Also, if you have the pyroblast at some point, you want to get the totems out of the way. I hope uh, my informative stream, I hope I'm also informative for you guys. 
I know I'm giving a lot of thoughts here. I hope you guys like it when I do that. Hm. All right. I mean, I knew that was likely to happen if I don't draw location. Got a long way to go. Okay, let's horn for tempo. As I said, guys, horn often is a tempo play. Especially now because I don't think he has null. Null evolve is a turn 4 play if he didn't play Primordial Wave last turn. But now he can't. That was weak. Psycho Frost Strike. Freeze matters. Weapon hero. Actually, just Bone Breaker hero power, I think. Let's get some. I mean, he's probably gonna play the five force that have a rush next turn, right? And then we can frost strike one and hit one, and then we have whatever we do. There we go, evolving time. Not that's not that good actually. I mean, it's not the worst for me because. If it is lifesteal like the Nafris, I don't want to hit it. Now I can just face tank it even, right? I just kill it with Frost Strike. Can I get anything good with Frost Strike for 3 mana? My rule is eternal. Or do I ever do this first? What can I get? Not much right except location, which is not even that good. actually good we can also pick horn if we want to play around primordial wave oh that's so good lady guys furies can win you this game i think we actually go lady this is kind of a lady end Because the freeze matters, they don't get the lifesteal in, they don't get their big minions bloodless plays in. He's having a very poor hand by the way. Way under average draw. Going for the cutie, huh? Targeting the cutie, oh, 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 oh. He might freeze or devolve this still. I'm just thinking what I can do against that the best. If he freezes or devolves it. Yeah, then we always do this as well. That's not bad in this matchup, right? I don't think Blob Boil does anything. That fits together, four and three. More bones to knock on. Here we go again. Another round. Needs to get the Nafris here, I think, right? Or Taunt. That's not good, guys. He missed twice. This is not good in this matchup. I'm just gonna freeze. I'm even gonna just do this. I was expecting that. Uh, let's see. That's also a good activator of the lady. I need to not die to Bloodlust into uh, Brukana or stuff like that, of course. So I could do this into Hero Power there, into Frost Strike the Zero Two as well. I mean, 3-3, three, three, is that not good enough here? Yeah, that should be good enough, right? Could also weapon here. I have but little time. Maybe I shouldn't gamba on these little ones to be alive. Ah. 
If he blusses me six, seven, eight. Actually, I shouldn't risk it, guys. There's really no reason to risk. Because I only lose to Brukan double hit if he bloodlust here, right? I mean, we have infinite seven mana spell. I shouldn't risk that, that stuff. No Brukan. Is there any card that makes your spell cost more, guys? That you can evolve into? Starfish? He doesn't even have room for Starfish now. His board is full of lul. Primordial Wave can happen here. I don't know, and then he hits Grom, Caring, Crush, and more of that stuff. I think I just checkmated him as much as I could, right? I mean, if Shaman doesn't have the good early game against Frost, they really can't do much. Like, his Nova's already one turn kind of too late, I think. Of course, he still had ways out, but he needed some real cheating there. So Shaman still feels pretty... I mean, I don't think this matchup is... I still think it's playable from Shaman's side. Shaman farms the... Shaman is still pretty good on ladder. It kind of farms the Priest and the Warlocks, I think. Because if you have one big boy against Warlock, they just cry. Against Shaman, Primordial Wave is OP, OP. Wow, you are actually doing it, Thais. We're going for it, Kiyumi.